chair lays out House Bill 3657. Uh, there's a committee substitute. Representative Johnson lays out the committee substitute to House Bill 3657. For you notaries that did not get to attend the hearing on HB 3657, I'm going to cover that for you here. First, we'll go over the bill and then you'll be able to watch the actual video. So here it is on the screen and it says that it's a bill to be entitled an act relating to notaries public creating a criminal offense, be it enacted by the legislature of the state of Texas, Section 1406.009, the government code is amended to read as follows. In this section, good cause includes a false statement knowingly made in an application, the failure to comply with Section 406.017, a final conviction for a violation of a law concerning the regulation of the conduct of notaries public in this state or any other state, the imposition on the notary public of an administrative, criminal, or civil penalty for a violation of a law or rule prescribing the duties of a notary public. Number five, performing any notarization when the person for whom the notarization is performed did not personally appear before the notary at the time the notarization is executed. Or number six, failure to maintain records under section 406.014. Section two, subchapter A, chapter 406, government code is amended by adding section 406.0091 to read as follows. Section offense of notarization for person not personally appearing. A person commits an offense if, as a notary public, the person person knowingly performs any notarization when the person for whom the notarization is performed did not personally appear before the notary public at the time the notarization is executed. B, an offense under this section is a class A misdemeanor except that it is a felony of the third degree if the document being notarized involves the transfer of real property. Section 3, government code is amended by these adding subsection C to read as follows. A notary public who has applied for reappointment must successfully comply complete the continuing education requirements established under Section 406.023 before being reappointed. Section 4, Section 406.014 Government Code is amended by adding subsection F to read as follow. A notary public shall retain the records required by subsection A until the 15th anniversary of the date of notarization. Section 5, Section 406.023 Government Code is amended by adding subsection D to read as follows. The Secretary of State shall adopt rules necessary to establish continuing education education requirements for reappointment as a notary public. Section 6. Not later than January 1, 2024, the Secretary of State shall adopt rules necessary to implement the change in law made by this Act. Section 7. The change in law made by this Act applies only to an application for notary public reappointment submitted on or after January 1, 2024. An application submitted before January 1, 2024 is governed by the law as it existed immediately before the effective date of this Act, and that law is continued continued in effect for that purpose. Section 8. This act takes effect September 1st, 2023. I just wanted to say thank you to Brenda Stone for being so proactive on this. She has posted in her Facebook groups and she did note that Annette Donker just testified on HB 3657 at the Capitol about education for notaries in Texas and we are about to hear that testimony next. Chair lays out House Bill 3657. Uh, there's a committee substitute. Representative Johnson lays out the committee substitute to House Bill 3657, and the chair recognizes uh, Representative Anchia to explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Vice Chair Johnson. Um, there's a notable rise in the state of Texas in homes being stolen by deed fraud. These offenses usually occur when a person forges an owner's signature and files a fraudulent deed. These property transfers usually occur outside a title company and in-person notaries do not have the safety protocols necessary to ensure authenticity and accuracy. The only check on authenticity of the owner's in-person signature is the notary public, which makes the notary public the primary, the most important link, but sometimes the weakest link in this process. Hundreds of properties in Dallas County are the subject of criminal investigations, criminal charges, and civil lawsuits due to actors taking advantage of the lack of vetting process at county clerk's offices. In-person notaries are being exploited by criminals sometimes, including the presentment of fake IDs, false claims, and um, previously signed documents. In some cases, notaries are in fact complicit in these fraudulent transactions. So I've been working with the White Collar Crimes Division at the DA's office in Dallas to strengthen notaries' public education and retention requirements. We've also been working very closely with the Secretary of State's office on a continuing edu education program. 
So the bill does two things, or a couple of different things. Um, it creates a ongoing continuing education process, much like Vice Chair Johnson lawyers have. Um, there's also an initial education process that was placed in the bill, and it also really, it increases penalties for those situations where a notary is complicit, does, uh, a person does not present before them, and they, in fact, authorize that signature without the, the presentment of the person. My intent for this bill, and that's why we've been working so closely with the Secretary of State's office, is to have the Secretary of State use pre-existing materials um, that they've developed over time to implement this program internally, so an in-house Secretary of State-run program. Uh, it's not my intention at all that there be a vendor uh, involved here. And this bill simply seeks to reduce crime. We're coming at this from a criminal justice perspective, a law enforcement uh, perspective. So we've worked with the Secretary of State's office to, uh, in the committee substitute, to do uh, four different things. To add the mandatory education component to receive a license in the first place for notary publics, and that will be in the government code 406.006. Second, to establish continuing education for reappointment. Actually, that reappointment happens every four years or so. Uh, to explicitly exempt online notarization from being criminalized. We got some feedback from the marketplace that there was a two-factor authentication program. It's incredibly secure in the online space. Um, we had received so much feedback that we figured, hey, let's you know that's a, a fairly secure process. We're not seeing the uh, we're not seeing the fraud in that space, or at least the white collar division in Dallas County is not seeing fraud in that space. Um, and then lower uh, retainment of records for the notaries log from 15 to 10 years, um, and uh, this is the longest statute for any of the relevant uh, crimes that might be charged. It's consistent with the statute of limitations for any of the relevant crimes that may be charged as a result of deed fraud. Um, you're going to hear testimony from the White Collar Division uh, at, uh, at uh, uh, the DA's office that's investigating these crimes. It's taken uh, countless uh, examples of testimony where notaries have come before them and said, yeah, I, I signed that, uh, or I, I, off, um, I said that the person was present when they signed and they in fact weren't. And this has been a, a fairly significant problem in Dallas County. Hundreds of properties have been subject to this deed fraud. So uh, we'll also have uh, county clerks uh, also talk about uh, the, the vulnerability link here. And that's what we're trying to get at, Mr. Chairman and members. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you for your time today. All right, thank you. Members, any questions for the bill's author? All right. Thank, thank you. you. And I, and I humbly beseech the chair for the opportunity to close since no right exists in the rules. Thank you. Thy request is granted. Um, the chair calls uh, Jennifer Fogg and Philip Clark. And then um, Henry Garcia and uh, Jatami Swindle. I apologize if I got anyone's name wrong. Ms. Fogg, let's start with you. And I want to uh, remind the witnesses on, on this bill and any other bill that we hear today uh, to, um, you, you do have three minutes. The committee um, appreciates you being here and looks forward to your testimony um, on, on this and every bill. I would ask that you be, uh, that, you, that you follow the time and don't make me interrupt you. And also to the extent that you're able to listen to prior witnesses and to offer the committee new information. Uh, to not repeat information that other witnesses have already told us. Um, <clears throat> you're free to say whatever you want during your testimony, but looking at our agenda today and the number of witnesses we have before our committee, I'd ask that you do your best to, uh, to offer us new information as you come up and uh, testify in front of the committee. With that, the chair calls Jennifer Fogg. Jennifer, I have you here on behalf of the Rockwall County Clerk testifying for HB 3657. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Chairman, committee members. I come before you today to express my support for House Bill 3657, being the county clerk with property records being filed in my office constantly every day, 24,000 to 36,000 annually. With this, it creates a lot of stress 
um, being that we have a lot of deed fraud, even in Rockwell County, the smallest county in Texas. Uh, recently, Allegiance Title came to me and told me that February 15th of 2023, they had a file that came through that was fraudulent. Thankfully, they caught it. We foster these relationships so that we can communicate and stay on the same page as far as the, the fraud that's going on in Rockwell County. Now, in this instance, the seller listed the property on Zillow as a FISBO, and, which is a for sale by owner, and they indicated that the contract was only to be communicated by email with the title company and wanted to close by notary. This title company started digging and they found the real owner, and um, thankfully, before anybody closed. Um, this was a concern being that the notary request um, was done and not at a title company. So my concern with this is that currently there are no actual um, requirements to take or pass a test to be a notary. The requirements to become a notary in Texas, you have to be 18 or older, be a legal resident of the state of Texas, have no criminal convictions or felonies, provide a four-year $10,000 notary bond, complete a notary application approved by the state of tech, um, sorry, the uh, Texas Secretary of State and pay a state filing fee. With that, I will answer any questions. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Fogg. Members, any questions for the witness? All right, thank you for your testimony. Uh, the chair calls Philip Clark. Philip, I have you registering on behalf of the Dallas County DA's office, testifying for House Bill 3657, is that correct? Yes, All right. thank you, good morning. My name is Philip Clark and I am with the district attorney's office from Dallas County. I appear on behalf of John Crusoe, the district attorney there. I do work in the white collar crime unit of the specialized crime division. And all or nearly all of the cases that I call deed fraud uh, come to me. I prosecute these cases in our office and in our county. And one of the first notes that I'll make is that this is not a Dallas County issue. This is a Rockwell County issue, Tarrant County issue, Harris County issue. And I mentioned those specifically because some of my cases involve those counties. I have cases involving prop people who do this activity in, across the state. So they get uh, aggregated into a case with me in, at the Dallas DA's office. The uh, important things to note here is that in some instances, a notary public is complicit in the deed fraud. But I want to be clear that in most instances, I think complicit is the wrong word. Uh, they, they are involved. In most instances, we have either a notary who has been duped, okay? This is a very innocent situation for a notary. They've been duped by somebody who provides them a, a false ID. But in many instances, we have gotten word, sworn affidavits, testimony from notaries who admit that they notarized a document because the person who came to them was someone that they thought they could trust. Who said, oh, well, you know my, my wife, she's you know out of the country, but won't you notarize her signature? And then they go ahead and do it. Blatantly against the rules and laws involving the procedures for notary, notarizations. That right there, that moment, begins a very long chain of problems. The entire system relies on the authentication of a person's signature that is provided by the notary public. It's, it, the document is then taken to the county clerk's office where it will be filed. They don't verify, they can't verify, they just know that it has been notarized. Then that document is used to be held up and said, look, I own this property now. The seller sold me the property, there's their signature, I own the property, and probably what I'm going to do next is then sell this property at a rather low price so that I can move it quickly. And what happens now is we have several layers of litigation that will ensue for months or years. This bill seeks to <coughs> fill up some of the holes in the problem. Uh, notaries public are honorable and, and we appreciate the, the function that they serve. I think it's important for the entire system though that they have mandatory training before they get their stamp that they have mandatory training before they get their renewal because things change over time. It's also important, um, as the representative indicated, that, that's my time. No, go ahead, you can wrap up. It's also important um, <clears throat> that in, in addition to the training that their records be, be maintained. Investigating these cases is stymied 
many of the times. I would say 75 to 80 percent of the time because the investigators who come to the notary are given the response, I don't have my logbook anymore. Oh, I don't even keep a logbook. I don't do this often enough. I, I know the people that I notarize for. The investigation gets stymied at that stage, trying to figure out who it was that came and, and duped this poor notary and caused this problems for this homeowner and sold this house to somebody who gave them their true good hard earned cash. So we ask that you uh, support this bill and move it forward because it, it fills the holes in the system. Okay, thank you, Philip. Um, members, any questions for the witness? The chair will show uh, Chairman Murr present as well. All right, thank you for your testimony. Thank you, sir. And I will note that I did submit a statement from uh, one of the victims of, of deed fraud that's okay. before you. Okay, great. Um, has that been distributed? Okay, yeah, we, we have it up here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the chair calls Henry Garcia. Um, Henry, I have you here on behalf of yourself testifying on House Bill 3657. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Basically, I've reduced my uh, testimony to writing, and you should have a copy of the statements that I'm about to make. <clears throat> uh, Honorable Chairman Leach and committee members, my name is Henry Garcia. For the record, I'm an attorney, real estate broker, PNC, insurance agent, and notary public. I'm here to comment on this bill. I've been practicing, excuse me, I've been practicing since 1979 in these specialized areas. In addition, I'm the former director of the Uniform Commercial Code, Notary's Public Division of the Secretary of State's Office. I served from 1979 to 1984 under Secretary Strake, Rain, Dean, and Fainer. During this time, I aided in commissioning about 700,000 Texas notaries. I estimate there are about 500,000 Texas notaries now. Uh, during my tenure as Texas Notary Director, I spearheaded the introduction of notary legislation that made positive changes to the Notary Public Act, changes that would protect the public at large and address the need to have notaries educated and regulated. Bills were drafted by me as well as at my behalf, my, my behest, and was uh, sponsored by a listed name of senators and representatives. Senator Grant Jones was uh, the key party that I worked with when I was with the Secretary of State's office. In 1987, during the 70th Le Texas legislature, legislative session, Senate Bill 337, sponsored, sponsored by Senator Jones, was initially proposed and followed with notary education requirement and statutory procedures to implement this mandate. Mm -hmm. However, it was taken out with the committee substitute. But it still passed, and it did make monumental changes uh, to the Texas Notary Public Act. Uh, the bill's education requirements, as I drafted, list essentially a six-hour course for notaries public, course of study to be approved by a central education agency, offered by a statewide or national organization of notaries public, accredited institute or school of higher education, did not require a completion of a course for subsequent reappointments. I personally have been an instructor with the Austin Community College for a number of years and have offered a three to four hour course titled Texas Notary Law and Procedure, as well as offering this program to various business groups and associations. Other community colleges have this type of notary training. Also, many other local Texas organizations can currently incorporate education training. Uh, I really don't have a problem with the bill. I think it's uh, uh, very proactive in the concept of preventing fraud. I, I agree with the prior statements. My concern basically is with the rulemaking procedures that fall with the Secretary of State for implementation of any kind of education program. Uh, as I note in my uh, statement here, fails to give guidance on the process procedures for, for implementation of the proposed educational requirements nor guidance for sanctioning entities who can assist Texas notaries with this requirement. Only states that rules be established without provision for sanctioning current local educational offerings. And point of current offerings, uh, the benefit notaries in the local communities, I would humbly request that a provision be incorporated in the bill for the uh, continuance of this educational option. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. I urge you to incorporate a provision in this bill which maximizes and guarantees that the <coughs> Texas notaries is not limited to a single business group, possibly located out of state, but by local and Texas-based educational entities. Right. Thank you. Members, any questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. The chair calls Jatami Swindell. Um, I have you here registered um, on behalf of the Secretary of State's office on the bill as a resource witness. Yes, that's correct. All right, go ahead. Um, well, my name is Jatem Swindell. I'm the Director of Government Filings at the Secretary of State's Office. I don't have any specific testimony, but I'm here to answer any questions that you all may have. Okay, members, any questions for the resource witness? Okay, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate each of you joining us today. Um, all right, I'm going to call our next panel of witnesses. The chair calls um, Derek Huckleberry, Isaac, Azucena Jimenez, Caitlin Weechie, and Martina Gonzalez. <clears throat> Again, I want to reiterate um, 
the three minute time limits as well as uh, trying your best to offer the committee new information. And uh, I would also, if you have written testimony for the committee, we welcome that. Um, please know that if you give us written testimony, we're going to read it. Uh, you don't need to sit here and take three minutes to read it to us. And so um, I would ask that you, that you try your best as well if you submit written testimony to offer us something additionally uh, in addition to or different than what your written testimony states instead of just reciting it. Thank you for your understanding. With that, the chair calls Derek Huckleberry. Uh, Derek, I have you here on um, <clears throat> behalf of notaries.com registered against House Bill 3657. Is that the, is that the case? That is correct, okay. sir. Go ahead. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman, representatives, for uh, letting us uh, share our thoughts on this uh, this morning. Notaries.com opposes House Bill 3650, uh, 3657 as it is currently written. While we advocate notary education for both new and renewing notaries, we believe that notary education is best provided by those in the private sector protecting the consumer by offering choices in the marketplace as well as fostering education. So we are, we're very, uh, notaries.com does notary education, notary bonding, uh, notary training in 29 states. And uh, we feel that education is very important. Uh, we want our notaries educated. We want them uh, following the rule of law. And uh, as, but as the bill is currently written, there's a, a couple things in it that, uh, I, and I understand this morning there was a sub, uh, sub bill that added new notaries, the original bill had just renewing notaries. And so I know that they've added new notaries and appreciative of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your testimony. Members, any questions? Okay. Thanks for your testimony. Um, Ms. Jimenez, Jimenez, how do you say your first name? Asusena. Asusena Jimenez. I have you here on behalf of the American <laughs> Association of Notaries and yourself testifying against House Bill 3657. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, go ahead. Chairman Leach and members, my name is Azucena Jimenez. I am representing American Association of Notaries and myself in opposition to uh, HB 3657. I am the Chief Operating Officer of American Association of Notaries, a Texas-based notary organization in Houston established in 1994. We are excited that Texas lawmakers want to improve <clears throat> notary laws that educate and train notaries. However, we oppose the bill as written. We prefer uh, Representative Anchia's intent that he mentioned this morning to be included in the bill. Intent is not a law. We have uh, discussed with Representative Anchia's office our concerns <laughs> that the education part of the bill, as written, could create a monopoly for one course vendor. We provide his office with an education bill um, that we supported in 2017. We, they promise. Uh, to amend HB 30, 3657 to those as addressed and concerns that we have not those uh, have not seen those concerns addressed. The education section of uh, HB 3657 is not in the best interest of notaries and small businesses. Here are a um, few examples. In 2020, the state of New Mexico passed an education law um, through a RFP. The contract was awarded to the National Notary Association. They are and still are, they were and still are the sole provider of the education in that state. Um, on their website, they advertise uh, the required education course and the notary application, the notary bond and the uh, supplies as a one uh, package in one price, leaving li uh, little choices for notaries to choose where to shop. Um, the same case happened in another state where they are also the sole provider of the notary course. Um, many states resisted in this one course vendor policy since it, it is anti-competition, could lead to price gouging and is not in the best interest of notaries and small businesses. Uh, reason number two why we opposed uh, this bill, the education section is not funded um, we work with the Secretary of State office every day. They do not have the resources to establish an effective education program, in our opinion. With no funding, they, 
we need to contract a outside course vendor to provide education for all Texas notaries. We want to help educate notaries. Educate Education section is very vague. Um, if need to say who will it needs to say who will uh, provide the course and how the Secretary of State will um, be funded to manage the course. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Jimenez. Members, any questions for the witness? All right. Um, Caitlin, help me with your last name. Weich. Caitlin Weich. Um, Caitlin, I have you here on behalf of the American Association of Notaries and yourself testifying against House Bill 3657. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, go ahead. Chairman Leach and members of the committee, my name is Caitlin Weich. I'm representing the American Association of Notaries and myself in opposition at HB 3657. I am a customer sales representative at the American Association of Notaries. I appreciate your time and dedication to your positions as representatives of the state of Texas. The current construction of the bill creates various layers of ambiguity. This bill is not in the best interest of the 435,000 Texas notaries. The bill does not provide the Secretary of State with any resources to approve courses. This could create a monopoly by allowing the state to utilize a sole vendor to administer educational notary courses. And this vendor may also sell notary supplies, notary bonds, as well as notary insurance, which could, which would have a negative financial impact on many Texas small businesses offering these products and services. I recommend the bill to be amended to allow the Secretary of State to receive a fee on each application submitted in order to approve multiple notary courses. Thank you, and I'll gladly answer any questions you may have. All right, thank you, Ms. Weich. Uh, appreciate your testimony. Members, any questions? All right, with that, um, Chair calls Martina Gonzalez. Martina, I have you here registered on behalf of All State Surety Bonds, Inc., testifying against House Bill 3657. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, go ahead. Honorable Chairman Leach and members of the committee. My name is Martina Gonzalez. I am the office manager at Allstate Charity Bonds Inc. On behalf of Allstate Charity Bonds and myself, we would like to express our opposition to HB 3657. We are concerned about Section 5, HB 3657. It is unfunded to support a training program and is vague on who will provide the training. We are concerned that if the training program is aware to and awarded to an entity that also sells notary bonds, there is a chance that the, this entity will tie purchasing the notary bond to the course. This will make the bill anti-competitive because it will not give notaries a choice to choose where they want to shop for bonds. Please amend this bill to promote competition and protect Texas small business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Members, any questions? <clears throat> okay, thank you to the entire panel. Thank Appreciate you. you being here today. Thank uh, you. We have uh, one additional panel of witnesses to testify. Um, the chair calls Tracy Jordan, Anahi Garcia, Martin Renteria, and Annette Donker. Okay, um, Ms. Jordan, is that you? Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm well in your side. Thanks for being here. Good. I have you here registered on behalf of yourself against House Bill 3657. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> Greetings to the chair and all honorable members of the committee. My name is Tracy Jordan, and I have been a commission notary since April of 2008. I am testifying as a notary public, notary ambassador, and notary mentor providing, excuse me, regarding the opposition of proposed House Bill 3657, regarding the retention period for journal entries and educational requirements. Currently, the retention period for journal entries is three years for in-person transactions and five years for remote transactions, which includes the entire audio and video recording. 
By extending the current retention period, this will cause notaries who have heavy workloads such as real estate loan closings, medical records retention, estate planning, and et cetera, to store these records for an excessive length of time. Life happens to everyone. In fact, my office, my first floor office was flooded as a result of Hurricane Harvey in 2017. Had this proposed retention period been in law back in 2017, antiquated records definitely could have been damaged. It is my belief that the retention period proposed to be extended is a result of the increase in fraud related to the transfer of real property. Perhaps a law can be passed related to adding a certificate of authentic authenticity to be submitted when a deed is filed in court. Additionally, I am in opposition of continuing education requirements for reappointing notaries. I heard this morning that it will be added for new notaries as well. Um, data collected from the Secretary of State Notary Public Unit has revealed that notaries that are, <laughs> excuse me, erroneous errors were made by notaries within the first two years of their first commission, resulting in formal complaints filed against them. As a notary mentor and ambassador, I conduct one-on-ones with mentees and newly commissioned notaries where we sit down and dissect the government code as well as the civil practice and remedies code. As a commissioned notary, maintaining ethics and integrity is paramount. Therefore, this can be attained by providing educational requirements to newly commissioned notaries that are uh, through an approved state provider through the state. I feel it is your duty as state reps to ensure that the language on the bill clearly states that all qualified course providers have the opportunity to teach these courses and not one specific entity. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Ms. Jordan, members, any questions? Thank you. Chair calls uh, Anahi Garcia. Uh, I have you here testifying on behalf of... Um, I make stamps. I make stamps. Um, testifying against House Bill 3657. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, go ahead. Um, hello, my name is um, Anai Garcia. I work at I Make Stamps Inc. on behalf of I Make Stamps Inc. and myself. Um, we would like to express our opposition to HB 3657. Um, I don't want to repeat myself. It's basically what everybody has said in the past. It's just the notary course part. Um, we don't want just one sole provider to be able to provide that course to all notaries. We want it to be either in a competitive market or anything like that because it does hurt um, small businesses just by allowing um, one vendor to provide that notary course. But that's it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. Members, any questions? Okay. Uh, the chair calls um, Martin Renteria. I have you here on behalf of the Texas Association of Notaries Public, uh, Texas Notary Training Forum, and yourself testifying against House Bill 3657. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. My name is Martin Renteria. I'm here to not support the bill as it is written. Uh, primarily, I am for training new notaries as well as for reappointments, uh, the continuing education. But being involved in uh, the training of notaries for the past several years, uh, the way my curriculum goes is that we do teach uh, new notaries as well as experienced notaries. All of the all of the points that are covered in the Administrative Code, Chapter 87, the uh, Civil Practices and Remedies Code, Chapter 121, the Government Code, Chapter 406, and as well as the Secretary of State's website. And I do want to point out that the Secretary of State does have a website. They do have a training section made up of different modules, uh, about 50 minutes long, that cover the absolute basics of notary training. If that it, in and of itself can be mandated for all new notaries to, to uh, go through on the Secretary of State's website, that, will be, that should be sufficient for all new notaries to start their practices and know what they're doing. But, uh, but uh, with that 50-minute module, it does lack a lot. Uh, for example, uh, none of the notaries in that website are taught uh, about maintaining a record journal, how important it is. None of the notaries are taught that they must provide an oath to all the jurats that, uh, that they seek. And um, that's why we do believe that trading is important. I could change my support to neutral if it's uh, understood that uh, the Secretary of State may have the ability to, uh, to authorize or or uh, authenticate certain Texas-based uh, vendors to continue to teach uh, uh, the notary rules and regulations here in the state of Texas and not outsource it to out-of-state companies. Um, uh, with that, uh, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be free to answer them. Okay. Um, members, any questions? 
<clears throat> okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez. The chair calls um, Annette Donker. Good morning. Um, I have you here register on behalf of yourself uh, testifying against House Bill 3657. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Annette Donker. I've been in commission notary since 1994. Um, I was not aware that they put in the substitute bill this morning. We have going off of the first bill that was there. But um, so I agree with the addition of requiring that training prior to the first commission. The um, lack of education of notaries is harming our citizens. I agree with the push to educate our notaries. Um, my concern with it initially was that it was not required at the first commission. It was only being required at recommission, which would give them four years to make notary errors. Unfortunately, without required education, notaries do not take this seriously. They don't seek out education. Often their employers get it for them. They give them a book and a stamp. Here you go. Um, that's honestly was my experience when I started out. Um, if the education is not mandatory, they don't seek it out theirself. So that portion I would support my opposition does come in with a couple of issues. First, the education um, should not be sourced out to that one vendor. Uh, we want to make sure that we have an opportunity to seek our own sources. Um, of course, I would expect the Secretary of State to increase our fee to be commissioned to cover that administration cost of that education program. It's, re it's necessary and notaries need to have some skin in the game. Um, they pay $100. They're commissioned, they get a stamp and a book, and they're free to notarize without any guidance. Um, I don't want to harp on that one too long, um, but each element or amendment they're requesting in this bill would go back to education. There was a uh, part of this makes it a felony if they notarize a document without personal appearance of the signer if it is a property deed and a misdemeanor if it's not. I'm going to say I disagree with that because there are documents that notaries notarize on a regular basis that are just as important as property deeds. What if that was your parents' will or their power of attorney and you don't know until something happens to them that that notary completely messed it up and you go to present that document and it is tossed out because it isn't notarized properly. So I think it should be across the board a penalty of a felony if they do notarize a document without personal appearance. And I do have some written notes that we'll provide to you. And I sent an email that may have gotten to you okay. prior. Okay, great. Thank you, Ms. Docker. Um, Representative Vasud. Uh, thank you for your testimony. I appreciate your perspective being a notary as long as you have been. Um, when I first thought about this bill, uh, and, and maybe I was thinking about it wrong, you know, I thought, in my experience, notaries, you, you don't really make a lot of money being a notary. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And so, you know, the profit margin on, on a notary public is slim to none. Is that fair? Very fair. In fact, do many notaries probably not make any money at this? It depends on what sector they're in. So okay. if you are, as an employee, you're not making anything as that notary. Um, if you are stationary, it doesn't cover the cost of it to be a notary. There are some mobile elements where um, title companies from out of state, national companies hire notaries to do mobile work where it could be and it can be profitable. But that sector okay. only. Well, I appreciate your perspective about uh, it's an important role. It very much is. And I appreciate the bill author um, with, with the legislation about, you know, tightening up some things in order to protect homeowners and, and protect property owners. The only thing I wanted to maybe flesh out a little bit, and, and I'd be curious of your thoughts on the policy side about if notaries don't make that much money, how does the balance work with some of these penalties or some of these recording requirements or some of these training requirements as far as attracting other people to be notaries to ensure that we have a sufficient supply? Do you think that any of the provisions of this committee substitute make it less likely somebody would want to be a notary, more likely somebody would be a notary? Do you think it's maybe neutral, it's a wash, people don't weigh these things at all? I, I would curious your perspective. I believe it would be um, neutral. I okay. don't think it would affect it because there are elements, if you are going into business to be a notary to do the mobile aspect, you're going in with the business knowledge to make a profit. 
and you're going to make a profit. Okay. If you are the notary that is hired by an employer, that employer is investing in that notary um, fee, the commission, and most of the time they're not covering that fee themselves. Okay. Um, it would be an employed position. They're receiving the stamp, the book. I don't think it would discourage notaries from becoming a notary. I think it would make it that much more important to them. They would realize the significance of that stamp okay. instead of, oh, all I have to do is pay this $100. I get my stamp, my book, and I can stamp anything. I don't have to take any education. I can go with what I think is right. And it's not always that way. I've met notaries that have been in the business with an employer for 10, 12 years and have no clue what they're doing. They have stamped the same document for 10, 12 years and they have, without the presence of the person, um, I worked at a large corporation and I had a board, I had a stack of documents that were signed by the board brought to me. And I was asked to notarize those documents. I said, are they still in the boardroom? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, no. I said, I'm sorry, I can't notarize this document. I don't know them. They've not signed in front of me. I can't do it. I was actually called on the carpet over that because I refused to do that notarization. The person on vacation came back and did it. I see. I see. And, and that was not a one-time thing. I mean, it's the lack of education and appearance is systemic. I have had banks send me packets of documents. Say, just sign them. We'll notarize them when we get them back. I've had law firms send me documents. Don't worry about it. Just sign it. We'll notarize it when we get it back in the office. I'm a notary. I'm like, no, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. um, that's not how it's done. So we have organizations that have incorporated non-presence into their business practices. And I think <clears throat> it's imperative that we mandate education. Understood. Thank you for your perspective. You're very welcome. Thank you, Ms. Donker. Members, any other questions? Okay, thank you to the entire panel. Does anyone else wish to testify on, for, or against the committee substitute to House Bill 3647? Seeing that, the chair recognizes Representative Enchia to close. Representative Vasud, thanks for those questions. I, I think that was the best witness of the day. Um, uh, I'm always grateful when people from around the state come and share their ideas and experiences with us because uh, we learn a lot, including including that last witness. Um, this bill is not about a business opportunity for anybody. Uh, in fact, that's why we're doing it at the Secretary of State's office. Um, you, you did hear, I was, uh, I, I believe most of the concerns, if not all of the concerns about the bill itself were addressed in the committee substitute and we, we did receive a lot of feedback. Um, the one thing that was a little confounding was the repeated narrative about a vendor bill. This is the Secretary of State's office is going to do this in-house with their existing resources. It does not prohibit continuing education to be offered anywhere else in the private market, but we're just working with the Secretary of State to set up a base curriculum. That's, that's it. There's no fiscal note on it. There will be, if there are additional costs, they will be covered by a fee. And this, we do this in, in, in many other sectors. Um, I will note that the American Association of Notaries, which was well represented up here, um, it's not a trade association. They sell high quality. If you go to the website, they sell high quality notary stamps and notary supplies. Um, the surety company that came to testify, um, sells notary bonds and insurance through the AANA. Um, and so it is, you heard from vendors that were concerned about there being other vendors in the marketplace. And um, I don't understand that because this, the, the only vendor, if you want to call it that, is the Secretary of State's office who's going to do this program. It's the only requirement here. And then the market will work as the market currently works for continuing education otherwise. That's it, we're trying to deal, we, we have a law enforcement approach to this this gap, and I really do appreciate the the last witness for highlighting the, the scope of the challenge. Okay, all right, members, any other questions? Yes, Representative Schofield. Yeah, uh, Mr. Ranch, I see this as a, as a two-part bill. We have a, a criminal penalty for notarizing something that's not signed in front of you, and then you have the education aspect and, and I, forgive me, I have three committees this morning, so I may not have heard every witness. I didn't hear anybody worried they're going to do a year in jail 
everybody seemed to be concerned somebody else was going to get paid to, to teach the course instead of them. Exactly. Um, which kind of amazed me. Now, uh, I, I didn't, I read the bill before the hearing, but I, I didn't, I'm trying to read the committee sub while we're sitting here. So the section six, I guess, is the section on, in the new version on the education part. Yeah. Right. And it just says the secretary of state will adopt the rules necessary to establish education requirements. It doesn't really say they'll do it in house. Is it your expectation that that's what they'll do or they'll set requirements and anybody who meets them can teach the course? Yeah. And um, we've been working with the secretary of state's office. They were here as a resource witness. Um, if you'd like to ask them about their bandwidth to do so, I think they would respond favorably. I don't want to speak for them, but that has been the, our discussions throughout this process. They can do this in house. And it'll probably be an online course. Likely. So and that, and that would I mean, I will say this. It would concern me if Secretary of State adopts rules that basically only one vendor gets to participate. Me too. That, and I'm sure it would. Um, but I think it's your expectation, and it certainly would be mine, that, they, that the bill says you're adopting the rules to do it. You can either put the course together or let anybody who meets those requirements do the course. Is that your understanding? That's exactly right. And, and, you know, if they were to go out to the marketplace, they'd have to run an RFP through the government code like all of our agencies do anyway. And, and I think the Secretary of State's office would confirm that, right? It would be open to everybody, all these vendors to participate. Uh, but that is not the intent of this bill. And they, they think they can do this in-house. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any other questions for the bill's author? All right. Thank you, Representative. Thank you. Uh, with that, the chair will withdraw the committee substitute to House Bill 3657 and will leave House Bill 3657 uh, pending at this time.